Um, our subject is uh, not in the future, but in the past. Uh, we have uh, another star member of the Philadelphia period, Ulrich Zwingli from the first, uh, his birth was in the, on the first January of 1484 to and lived to 11th of October in 1531. He was burned two months after Martin Luther. Ulrich Swingley was burned into a peasant family. His father's brother had a pastorate in Wildhaus and thereafter in Wesen. At the age of five, he went to school in Wesen and lived with his uncle. At the age of 10, he was sent to Basel to learn Latin in particular. He stayed three years. After that, he went to Bern to a well-known humanist. Humanism at that time embodied the ideology back to the ancient language, back to the Bible. In Bern, the Dominicans wanted him to join their order because of his beautiful voice. Therefore, his father and uncle persuaded him to leave Bern. In 14, 98, he went to the University of Vienna. He finished his education in 1506 in Basel. Huldrich Zwingli was ordained a priest in Constance in September 1506. The acquisition of the pastorate in Glarus brought Zwingli into contact with the trade of positions in the church. For this position, he had to pay 10 guilders annually from his income. Glarus belonged to the Diocese of Constance. Swingley had the pastorate in Glarus from 1506 to 1516 and in Einsiedeln from 1516 to 1518. During this time, Swingley devoted himself to intensive preaching activity. No sermons by Swingley have survived from this period. Swingley was under the influence of Swiss humanism and met personally Erasmus. Swingley had the library of about 300 to 350 books. He owned books by historians, philosophers, and church fathers, such as Athanasius, Augustine, Basil, Chrysostom, Cyprian, Jerome, and Irenaeus. The stock of books indicates a typical humanist library. Information about Swingley's development is provided by the notes in the books he read. He said of himself that he had been preaching the gospel since 1516. In this way, he wanted to say that he had reached Reformation clarity even before Luther. He continued his education in the parish ministry through self-study. In 1513, he was in search of authority and turned to the scriptures. He began to learn Greek in order to read the New Testament in the original text. In 1515, he began to read the books of Erasmus. In Zurich, there were humanistic tendencies. Misconduct from his use was cited against Zwingli's appointment. He excused himself with his use and with remorse for his transgressions. Zwingli took office in Zurich in, on January 1st, 1519, his 35th birthday. His sermons were based on a sequential interpretation of Matthew, then moved to, on to Acts and then to 1 Timothy. So this Swingley pointed to the savior and the life of the early Christians and the early church compared to the life of the church in his time. He read the writings of Luther, who opened up to him the right, uh, sorry, who opened up to him the right understanding of the Pauline letters and the Reformation doctrine of grace, sola gratia. However, he develops, especially through his preaching activity, which is based on careful exegesis. He studies the Bible, the church fathers, and contemporary literature. In the second half of 1519, Swingley suffered a serious illness. Around the middle of 1520, he encounters resistance in Zurich. In 15. 
22, he separated himself from humanism, which wanted to make reforms by holding on to traditional authorities. This included scripture, doctrines, councils, pope. He switched to the conviction of scripture as the sole basis for doctrine and life, and no longer recognizes the authority of the pope and councils since 1522. He criticizes the lack of morals in his time and names individual wrongdoing citizens of Zurich. He criticizes bad preachers and the monks whom he accuses of inactivity and good living. He explicit, explicitly rejects the veneration of the saints in 1519. He casts doubt on purgatory and claims unbaptized children are not condemned. He opposed tithing as an alleged divine institution. In 1522, the question of veneration of saints arose. In protest against the veneration of saints, the means of disrupting sermons was taken up. When Francis Lambert of Avignon preached about Mary and the saints, Swingley exclaimed, brother, you are mistaken. A disputation was then scheduled in Zurich to discuss preaching in relation to the veneration of saints. As a result, on July 21st in 1522, the scriptural sermon in the sense of Swingley was instructed. On 2nd July 1522, Swingley advocated the abolition of celibacy. The petition was addressed to Bishop Hugo, but was issued two weeks later under the title, A Friendly Request and Exhortation to the Confederates. He had been married to the widow Anna Reinhardt since the beginning of 1522. They had four children. He was accused of sedition, church schism, and heresy. They demanded that the church ceremonies be maintained for the sake of order. Swingley replied that in the present state of the church, there could be no question of order. He does not concede to the hierarchy the right to decide in matters of gospel preaching and church order. The Zurich disputation on January 29th and 1523, the disputation was attended by 600 participants and the delegation of the bishop. The delegation of the bishop wanted to convene a council that would decide on the question of supreme authority. Swingley countered that the assembly was a Christian assembly in the sense of the early church. The assembly may judge and has no need of a special teaching authority. The representative of the bishop's delegation, Fabri, criticized Swingley's 67 conclusions and referred to the need for church authority to teach. At the end of the disputation, the text of the council's decision, the so-called farewell, was published. No one had refuted the articles Swingley had made public, so he could continue with his preaching. His 76 conclusions are a summary of the contents of his sermons. He summarizes his preaching in two phrases, through scripture alone, sola scriptura, and Christ alone, solus Christus. In e volume 8, page 388, we read, only the truly converted, those uh, about uh, um, another person, uh, another interesting person, Hapmeyer, only the truly converted, those who separated themselves from sin, error, self, and the world, and who accepted Christ alone as their savior and head, constituted God's people, the church. In the same months, he visited Zurich and converted Zwingli to his idea with the consequent nullity of infant baptism. But two years later, Swingley, having seen that his, this would practically empty the state church in which he was doing his reform work, receded for this position and later became its most forceful opponent. In October 1523, Hapmeyer attended the second Zurich conference and supported Swingley in the 
debate with the Catholic theologians. And if you look to Holdrich Zwingli in the year 1523, there was a second dispensation, disputation on 26th to 28th October. Also laymen were invited to the second disputation. Following subject were discussed. The images of saints should be removed from the church. The Lord's Supper is celebrated differently than instituted by Christ. And the mass is not an offer of sacrifice, a new offer of sacrifice. At the disputation, we are 900 participants, including 350 priests. After the second disputation, traveling preachers were sent out since November 1523, among them Swingley. In the year 1524, one of his most important works is The Shepherd. Of March 26, 1524, showing the good and the false shepherd. Swingley grants the congregation that has a false shepherd the right to dismiss him by majority vote. The second work of Swingley is the Commentarius, which points to the true and false religion. For false religion, he now points to the Pope, the man of sin, the Antichrist. In Second Thessalonians, uh, second chapter, verse three, we read, let no man beguile you in any wise, for it will not be except the falling away come first and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The Commentarius contains two major subjects on the authorities and on the Lord's Supper. He defends himself against the accusation that the Reformation produces sedition and unruliness. He was convinced that his interpretation of the Lord's Supper was consistent with his theological thinking and the view of the Bible in early Christianity. The Baden Disputation in 1526. The Catholic party was led by John Eck, who also had the disputation with Martin Luther in 1519 in Leipzig. The Protestant party was led by John Ecolompard. The disputation lasted four weeks. Swingley was not present at the disputation because he did not agree with the terms of the disputation. In the decision of June 9 and 1526, Swingley's doctrine was condemned as erroneous. Swingley was to be considered expelled from the church and the distribution of his writing, writings were, was forbidden. The results was not based on an unanimous decision of the 13 localities rep represented. Bern, Basel, Schaffhausen and Zurich were against. In 1522 to 1529, um, there was a, a disputation from 6 to 26 January in 1528. And Bern went over to the reformed side. Swingley and Ecolompard were present, but Eck not. After Bern, confessional alliances were formed on the Protestant and Catholic sides. This resulted in a war. He opposed the Catholic understanding that the mass served to redeem sins. He understood that Christ paid for all the sins of mankind with his one-time sacrifice. The Lord's Supper, therefore, The Lord's Supper, therefore, is not a sacrifice, but a remembrance of that sacrifice. Swingley was so far in full agreement with Luther. Luther accepted the presence of Christ's body and blood in the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper, the so-called real presence. Swingley says that John 6, 
from verse 53 to 56 testifies to spiritual eating and drinking. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. When Karlstedt, a former friend of Luther, published five tracts on the Lord's Supper in Basel in late 1524, he met with approval of Ecolompard and Zwingli. In the second half of 1524, Zwingli received the understanding about the Lord's Supper. Zwingli understood the word, this is my body, this is my blood. Jesus wanted to say that the bread and wine of the Lord's Supper represent the body and blood of Jesus. In 1524 and 1525, published seven works on the Lord's Supper. On November 1525, he replies to Bogenhagen, a co-worker of Luther. He addressed the laity in February 1526 with his German paper, a clear instruction on the Supper of Christ. He used following arguments. If flesh and blood were actually present, they would be seen and tasted. Our earthly world cannot be the bearer of the spirit, as John 6.63 states. It is the spirit who gives life. Jesus uses earthly images for the spiritual and heavenly. The words of institution must be understood as figurative speech. Swingley's view is therefore called a symbolic interpretation. Since Christ is bodily in heaven after ascension, he cannot be bodily present in the elements of the supper. In celebration of the Lord's Supper, Christians should gratefully remember Christ's suffering and even in the Passover meal, the focus is not on the lamb, but on the memory of the gracious deliverance. Thus, Swingley saw certain connection between the Old and New Testament. And this, I think, is, is uh, especially interesting. He, he showed uh, unto the lamb and, uh, and had the thought that is the memory of the deliverance. So he had, uh, we would say, uh, understanding of certain pictures of the Old Testament. He further understood the celebration of the Lord's Supper brings the class together. Participants in the Lord's Supper confess their Christian faith and proclaim that they are redeemed by the bloodshed and death of Jesus Christ. Swingley's understanding of the Lord's Supper was remembrance, thanksgiving, coming together, confession, and commitment. Luther reacted with concern and contradicted Zwingli's view in the spring of 1527. From Strasbourg, Capito and Busa were interested in resolving Zwingli's and Luther's differences. The Landgrave Philip of Hesse invited to a dispute to Marburg, accompanied by a Columpart. Swingley arrived in Marburg on September 28, 1529. Luther and Melanchthon came later. The debates lasted from, lasted from October 1st to 3. The, the result were 15 Marburg articles, 14 of which set forth the common doctrine. The 15th article fixed the difference in the answer to the question about the presence of Christ in the Lord's Supper. It's uh, to here on the on the right side we see uh, Swingley and his helper Ecolompard, and uh, ben, below it is Luther and his helper uh, Melanchthon. Uh, this picture below I have from Sister Roberta. It came from America uh, with the post with, uh, with the letter to me. And uh, at the Landgrave's castle, a one on one discussion initially took place between Swingley and Melanchthon, Luther and Ecolompard, leading to rapprochements except on the questions of the Lord's Supper. Uh, 
The day after the main discussion followed at which Landgrave Philip and the selected audience were present. Luther and Swingley sat at the same table with Melanchthon and a column part. Luz, um, and uh, 1529, since the Landgrave continued to press for agreement, Luther formulated a series of 15 articles of faith that documented the common Protestant faith. After making minor changes to the text in a few places, both sides signed the Marburg articles. The first 14 articles contain common doctrinal statements about God, Christ, faith that makes righteous, baptism, while the dissent is confessed in the last article, the article on the Lord's Supper. There it says at the end, Two, we could not agree at this time whether the two body and blood of Christ are present in the bread and wine. But nevertheless, each party is to show Christian love toward the other, so far as conscience always permit. Let both parties unceasingly beseech God Almighty to give us right understanding by his spirit. Amen. Swingley said, our spirit and your spirit do not get along. On the Lord's Supper, Swingley's holds the right view. According to Swingley's bread and wine being a symbolic representation of Jesus' body and blood. In <coughs> E Volume 8, uh, at page uh, 438 release, thus the Little Frog Brethren, led by Ulrich Swingley, started a movement on the basis of the stewardship doctrine that the Lord's Supper symbolizes our appropriation of Christ's merit by faith and our fellowship with one another. And all the little flock's participants in this movement had their anointing completed for that the movement's work before it was perverted into the denomination, various called the Reformed Church, the Presbyterian Church, and so on. In the present truth, uh, 1595, uh, Swingley, I, I see the time is nearly over. Uh, Swingley is less famous than Luther, but in the 16th century was well known. After his death in 1531, Protestant and Catholics denounced Swingley. Interesting in this uh, connection is that also his uh, helper, Ökolompard, uh, died uh, very in uh, very early and so that the, the other the uh, the opponents of uh, Swingley and uh, Ökolompard uh, used it in bad arguments. Calvin called his death a sign of God's displeasure while Pope Clement the seventh called him a heretic worse than Luther. Like all Protestants, he insisted that his opponents try to prove him wrong by using the Bible. He returned to Basel in the early 15th, where he spent six months studying under a preacher named Thomas Wittenbach, who stressed the Holy Scripture was the supreme authority for faith. In Zurich, Swing instituted several reforms. He established a Presbyterian system of democratic representative church government, turned monasteries into hospitals and converted convents into sub kitchens for the poor. Swingley's 67 conclusion issued 1523 went beyond Luther's 95 thesis in questioning the entire Roman Catholic system, including the papacy, the mass pilgrimage, priestly celibacy, indulgences, and confessional and penance. I have to, to end here, but we have uh, another citation from the present truth. Um, on the right side, uh, perhaps interesting, we were in Switzerland. It's not far from us. Uh, these are paintings on the houses. It's a painting on the house. We see here swinging, uh, preaching on a uh, painted on a house in Switzerland in Stein am Rhein, it is called. What is interesting, we could only also say something about certain pictures, um, but the time will not allow it. I will end here and uh, wish uh, from this history the Lord's blessing. <laughs>